I'd like to try to live a couple of years in another country. Um, that's where it really clicked on me that, oh my God, I can work. I can actually be, be a nomad. Why settle with one place? So I put on a world map that I printed out in my kitchen. I was working out of my house at the time. And then every time I took a cup of coffee, I took the pen and then just made a dot in the map. And all of a sudden I can see this map with a lot of dots. This lifestyle, sitting here in Brazil, looking at the beach right here with the, a lot of nice people, uh, it's costing me less money than, uh, than, than when I lived in Denmark. I completely forget that in 10, 15 years time, I'm the normal retirement age. No, right. <laughs> uh, and oh my God, I never thought of that. When I started traveling, I thought, how do I, how do I know that I'm going to like this? But then if, if I don't like it, I can always just go back. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I say that all the time. Hi, everybody. Hello from Brazil. We're here in Porto de Galinhas, Brazil, just south of the town of Recife. And we're hanging out after Nomad Cruise 7. I'm here with Paul Bo, the radio vagabond. And you are watching Traveling with Kristen. Pale and I were both on Nomad Cruise 7 from Barcelona to Brazil. So we just spent two weeks on a boat together with about 490 other digital nomads and aspiring digital nomads. And now we're hanging out, having tropical fruit drinks here at the beach. And I really wanted to bring him on our show, which is Badass Digital Nomads, because he's such a badass. And he has a very unique journey of deciding after having a traditional life with the wife and kids and the whole deal, he decided he wanted to transition into becoming a digital nomad. So at age 50, he sold everything he owned and he's on a quest to visit every single country in the world. And what number is this? 73, I think. He's passed me. I've only been to like 60 <laughs> countries. He's been to 73 countries and he just But has... I come from Europe, so I can easily oh, do a right. lot. Yeah. But he's been on an amazing journey and he has the unique perspective of basically having his cake and eating it too. Coming from a traditional background, selling everything and now being a nomadic radio vagabond. And there's a lot that we can all learn from this and also how you guys can learn to transition into becoming a digital nomad. So welcome, Pale. Thank you to your humble home here. Or should I say thank you for having me at your <laughs> home? I don't even stay here. <laughs> Let's just pretend. I would love to hear uh, from the beginning, kind of uh, take us back to a day in your life um, before you became a digital nomad. Um, so you had a family in Denmark and you were working how many hours a week? What was your typical day like? And take us to that moment when you decided, I think that there's something else that I would want to do. I think there's something more. And what was that like for you? Where did this moment originate from? Yeah, well, it's uh, it's a bit of a, a, a journey in itself. Uh, I Like you said, I had the, the traditional life, but but it's always been something that I wanted. I've been lucky enough to be able to work with my passion, which is uh, radio and sound design. And actually, my background is graphic design, something I also liked. Uh, so then I started a radio station with uh, a couple of uh, young friends and uh, went through that whole journey. And it was actually standing on an, another beach in uh, Cannes, in the southern part of France, during Cannes Lions, that I spoke to a a friend of mine that just came back from two years in Cape Town um, wrote a book down there and came back and said that it was amazing to be out. And then I said, oh, at some point when my kids move out of the house, I'd like to try to live a couple of years in another country and maybe maybe in a, in a country where I could um, try to do radio in English as well because Danish is such a small language and uh, I wanted to play ball with the big guys. And then he just said, you, you, have, you have to go to Cape Town because, first of all, it's the greatest place in, in the world and it's so beautiful and people are friendly and uh, it's a great place to be. But then at the same time, they do great radio and some of the best radio advertising comes out of South, South Africa. So they're very, 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 um, they're very good in, in, in radio. So I thought, yeah, maybe, maybe it's going to be Cape Town that I'm going to be in. And I didn't plan to go nomadic. I just mm -hmm. planned to 
go somewhere to live for maybe two years and then go back. Uh, I haven't even been there, by the way. So oh, now I'm like, oh, I missed mistake, the best big place. Mistake. Yeah, and and having been there now, I agree. It, it is the it is my favorite place. But then uh, a friend of mine, another friend of mine, said um, you should go and try it out, see what it's like before you start to just emigrate to Cape Town without ever having been there. Fair so point. go there a few months, see what it's like, not just a week, but a few months, so you can feel what it's like to live there. And I did that in 2013, uh, January and February, and and that was actually where it dawned on me, oh my God, my clients, which at that time was mainly Danish um, advertising agencies and, um, and brands in Denmark, and they didn't care where I was. Um, that's where it really clicked on me that, oh my God, I can work, I can actually be, be a nomad with this job that I have, which is producing uh, radio commercials and podcasts and stuff for clients. And what year was that? In uh, 13. Okay. So you. then when I came home, I thought, well, Cape Town's wonderful and I, I definitely want to go back, but there's so many other places I haven't been to. I've traveled a lot, and I've even been some, to some faraway countries, uh, but with a base in Denmark. I've been mm -hmm. to Greenland twice, um, Iran, Iraq, uh, India, and all for, for work, and of course, all over Europe. Yeah. Uh, so I thought there's so many places I've never been to South America, I've never been to the Far East, so I thought, why settle with one place? So I put on a world map that I printed out in my kitchen. I was working out of my house at the time. And then every time I took a cup of coffee, I took the pen and then just made a dot in the map. And all of a sudden I could see this map with a lot of dots. And that was two and a half years before my youngest would graduate and move uh -huh. out. So I had a lot of time planning and I planned the crap out of it. It, yeah. was, uh, it was very, very detailed where I wanted to be in those two years that I wanted yeah. to travel. Because for me, it was still two years. That's Actually, great. in the beginning, I, I called it, I called my project Around the World in 80 Weeks, ah. which just had a funny ring to it. And But that's only a year and a half. So I thought, oh, no, that's, an, that's not enough. So it was two years and then it was four years. And now it's more open-ended after I started traveling. And of course, my my detailed plan. Two weeks into that, it was out the window, and it's, it's, it, I've never got back to it. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, wow. but I, I don't regret having planning because that put me in a mental state of, and I did a lot of research on the, the different yeah. countries, and uh, whenever it was my birthday or Christmas, and people said, "What do you want?" I said, "Travel books." So, nice. <laughs> so I have a ton of travel books, which, by the way, is in storage. With my vinyls, oh. and that's the only two things: my books and my vinyls. So, so everything else is gone. Everything else, yeah. So there's a couple of things I want to focus on there because um, I have a Facebook group. It's called Long Term Digital Nomad Success, and there are quite a few couples and families in there. And I'm single, and I don't have kids, so it's hard for me sometimes to um, give advice from the perspective of someone who has a family or is in a relationship. And there's a lot of people who always say, uh, I'm waiting for my kids to graduate and then I can go travel. And so I want to touch on that for a second. And then also um, how, how your mindset was kind of leading this journey because you well, a few things. You came up with these ideas. It didn't work out. You changed gears. You did something new. And you weren't afraid that, okay, now it's not around the world in 80 weeks. Or now my plan for two weeks is different for, like, the rest of my uh, year. And then maybe I don't want to travel for one year or two years. Maybe this can keep mm -hmm. going. Mm -hmm. And so I definitely want to bring just into the mind of the viewers how it's okay if your plan doesn't go as planned and how this can kind of be an evolution as long as you keep an open mindset you can just go with the flow and what starts as like a seed of an idea can turn into something completely different and I did not know this about you like I thought that you had this all from the beginning like I'm going to be a radio um, the radio vagabond this is my brand this is my podcast I'm going to travel all around the world and do this and I had no idea that it just started from from this idea of maybe um, maybe I don't have to work from home or maybe I can go to one place, Cape Town, or maybe I can go to a few different places or maybe I can do this for one year or two years. And that is just 
case in point, like the evolution of the digital nomad, in my opinion, and how so many of us kind of uh, came upon this lifestyle indirectly mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. how how that's okay. So I'm really glad that you said that because it's such a great example for people who aren't sure what their next step is. You can look back at your journey and see how it all happened. And now it seems like normal life and it seems uh, commonplace, but it was quite controversial a few years ago. And, yeah. and it still is when you bring this up to your family and friends, they might have some objections and things like that. So it's still not exactly the norm. Um, so yeah, what? How did you explain this to your your kids and your friends and family? You're like, sorry guys, I'm gonna go yeah, around the world. Like, were they worried for your safety or? Like uh, some some were, but not so much. And uh, I'm I'm bringing weapons, uh, my common sense and my smile. So that's uh, that's the way I oh travel when it comes to safety and not walk down a dark alley in the middle of the night, but not, also not being afraid. So keeping an open mind and, and anything can happen crossing the street no matter where you are. So, uh, yeah. But actually, when I started sharing the idea with the, some of my friends, uh, one friend of mine that had built this big company and... Um, he just bought a Jaguar, and uh, it was five years after I started my company. Uh, and he said, "No, you shouldn't go travel now. Now, now your company is taking off. You can go travel when you retire." Uh, and he may be right that I would probably be able to make more money if I stayed in Denmark, yeah. being closer to clients, and maybe started hiring staff and building a bigger company. But for me, that's that's not necessarily being rich I yeah. want to be rich in so many other ways in uh, in memories because I think I can't bring a Jaguar into the the, the hole <laughs> I, can, <Right. laughs> I can I can bring my memories and and that's that's more important to me obviously I still need to to make money in order to uh, to survive and uh, and go from place to place but no matter so many people think that this lifestyle is so expensive, but it doesn't have to be. And in fact, I I made a blog post where I told all about my 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 financial situation, mm -hmm. how much money I spend on transportation and accommodation, and those two um, items I I compare with what I had of fixed expenses for yeah. house and car and insurance and heating because it's cold in Denmark yeah. and, uh, and water and cable and everything that goes into having a house, all my fixed expenses and my expenses now are almost half of what they were before. Yeah. So this lifestyle, sitting here in Brazil, looking at the beach right here with the, a lot of nice people, uh, it's costing me less money than, uh, than, than when I lived in Denmark. Yeah, I know. That, actually, I was just talking about that earlier today. Um, with a couple other nomads and they were saying you know what are the biggest expenses and how can I you know how can people afford to travel what are your major tips for that and they said that in many cases it's just the startup expenses it's just the, the airfare and your accommodation mm -hmm. and if you're in a long-term rental it's your security deposit mm -hmm. and your first month's rent mm -hmm. and that many people this is why, one of the reasons why I'm such a proponent of slow travel because the biggest time and money expense yeah. in the digital nomad lifestyle is getting from point A to point B. Yeah. It's not really producing anything other than a different scenery or yeah. maybe a different experience, but um, yeah, it's just and getting the, there and yeah. then staying there. And at the same time, I'm actually kind of happy that I come from one of the countries where everything is expensive mm -hmm. because that makes it feel cheap when no matter where I go I wish I was yeah. from Norway but <laughs> yeah if you're from Norway everything's cheap or Iceland actually yeah, or Switzerland those yeah. three they're, they're the, the top three but Denmark's fairly, fairly expensive as well and uh, and that's also the living expenses of, of being even though obviously I eat more in restaurants than I yeah. did when I lived in Denmark uh, even though I, I enjoy cooking so whenever I can I try to get a, a place with a kitchen but I'm spending less money and then another thing when you have a house or an apartment you tend I tend to buy stuff I maybe didn't need <laughs> I would 
I had so much kitchen kitchen machines and yeah, stuff for you the wouldn't garden be the and, only one. I'll and, tell you. and nice decorating things to, for the, for the living room and all that. So you, you you buy stuff that you maybe don't need just because you have a place to put it. Yeah. And I travel with a backpack, so I the only thing I buy is the occasional T-shirt. I don't buy any souvenirs. I don't yeah. buy anything, even though I see something that's nice and I oh that would be nice, but where would I put it? Yeah, exactly. So, and part of me feels like I wish that I had collected some things like art and stuff throughout all of my travels, but to this day, I don't have a house to store it in, so it would just be, yeah, yeah. you know, just to be in my storage unit yeah. or whatever. Um, yeah, you know, I think that something I hadn't thought of so much until recently is that why do people think travel is so expensive? And the reason is because the way that society is structured, most people are consuming it on a short-term mm, basis, yeah. and that means they're paying a premium. Yeah. And so instead of uh, spending money on monthly accommodation or yearly accommodation, it's daily accommodation. Um, and so instead of shopping at the grocery store and eating out, you're just paying more for everything. And because people have, it's like a scarcity model, because people have a limited amount of time to take a holiday, one week, two weeks, if you're lucky, one month, mm. then they almost have a mindset of like, okay, I'm going to splurge because yeah. this is my annual vacation. I did that too. Yeah. And that's like, we need to flip things around and... Um, which is what I think a lot of nomads are doing, is being able to show that you can just have a balanced lifestyle where you get to travel mm. whenever you want, and you might not be retired, but you have the flexibility of traveling and experiencing new places mm. with not only not spending the amount of money that it would cost to go on vacation, but actually spending less in many cases, and in, in extreme cases where you come from Scandinavia and mm. go to someplace very affordable like Southeast Asia, or Eastern Europe, you could spend a fraction of your yeah. income but have a higher quality of life. Yeah. And this this can be actually like within reach for normal people like yeah. you and I who just figured it out eventually after trial and error. But then again, uh, this lifestyle maybe isn't for everybody because no. some people, they, 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 like, they like to have the base. Yeah. And, and I, I spoke to some of the, the people that were on the Nomad Cruise and... Uh, Still having a, a place somewhere, but travels a lot, and yeah. and, and maybe it's a person that's uh, location independent, so they technically could, but they enjoy coming back and saying, no, "Now I sleep in my own bed. Yeah. I have my stuff on the walls, and uh, I, and they enjoy having that." And I totally respect it. I don't miss it personally, uh, but but I totally respect, uh, and I don't think necessarily that I'm cooled because I because I travel uh, and I have to re remember that and remind myself yeah. about that I actually tell my clients that as well I say like you don't have to travel forever not only that but I wrote an article called you don't have to travel to be a digital nomad you can just be nomadic from your house so yeah. you don't have to travel having the option to travel is nice but for people who are traveling perpetually um, I think it's important that each person finds their their rhythm of travel mm. and that can change as well like for me sometimes I want to go fast and sometimes I want to take three months six months in one place sometimes I've spent years in the same mm. country and become an expat and it's like just being able to go with the with yeah. the flow and then if you go to a place that you really love like Cape Town being able to go back there yeah. again and, and visit it again yeah. so now that you've been traveling for two years or how long yeah two years and five months do you miss any of the things that you sold and how long do you think you'll be traveling and like what is the next um, end game or what's the next step in your vision? Is this a permanent thing or do you go back to in some form to I, a regular life? My, I have two daughters now uh, and, and just to answer your question from, from before, I don't think I did that. I think both my daughters, they think that it's cool what oh, I do yeah. and they come out and visit me. I have my youngest travel with me four months in Asia and, uh, and I speak more to them now than we did when we lived in the same house. Um, maybe not uh, speak, speak, but uh, at least uh, chat on a, yeah. a messenger or, or whatever and, and, and we speak a lot. So I'm very much a part of their life and they follow my life and, and I don't feel the distance that I thought I might mm -hmm. but uh, they're 22 and 24 right now so what I say typically is I'm gonna keep traveling full-time uh, until one of them starts 
producing grandchildren for me. <laughs> uh, and and they, they told me uh, that it's not going to be anytime soon. So, uh, so I, my guess would be another 10, 15 years of uh, traveling full time. But then I will never get the big house again. I'll just get a s tiny house or a small apartment uh, so I can still travel a lot. Yeah. Uh, as long as I can, I can still walk and uh, have my health, uh, I want to I wanna travel as much as I can. But, but the, the, it wasn't my plan to travel this long, when, even when I started. Uh, and the whole traveling to every country in the world came after a few months of traveling, uh, where I thought, why not, why not go for them all? Uh, mm -hmm. I don't know if I, I'll ever get there, but it's my goal. Uh, because there are so many countries in Africa, and, and some yeah. of them can be both uh, difficult and, and pricey to, to visit. But I, I want to see as much as I possibly can, and um, hopefully I will succeed one day. That's cool. Well, even if you don't succeed at seeing every country, you're succeeding in life and in following your mm -hmm. intuition and passion. Mm -hmm. And so I think that's enough, especially sharing everything with the world through your podcast. So I want to touch on that. Um, first, I apologize to my mom and grandma for not producing any grandkids yet, or great grandkids, but maybe in another 10 years <laughs> um so yeah tell us a little bit about uh, your podcast so actually i have two questions yeah. um now that you've been doing this first do you see yourself retiring in the traditional sense or do you think that you'll always work in some way to like stay active i i I think more or less I'll die with a microphone in my hand until <laughs> like I do right the now? until I do the microphone drop. <laughs> uh, uh, I love yeah, that. I, I, and and also I I don't really have anything put aside for retiring. It's it's not it's not a part of my vocabulary uh, to 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 retire. I enjoy what I do and I don't feel it's work. It's, yeah. it's something I enjoy doing, and, and uh, as long as I, I have my voice and my hearing, I, I hope that I can I can keep doing it because I really enjoy doing it. I love that perspective. I'm actually writing a blog about it right now. That's like, like retirement is dead. That's the old way of thinking these days. It's just about doing what can, you like can, or having the resources yeah. to generate income at yeah. any time in your life. Like think about. 20, 30 years from now, there will be so many more ways of yeah. generating income compared to even today. I can understand if, if it's uh, somebody that has a hard a physical or right. mentally hard work where it, 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 it feels like work. I can I can definitely understand that they at some point say, okay, I want to retire and yeah. and uh, live the, uh, the retirement uh, thing and uh, enjoy that because that's uh, sort of been the carrot uh, that maybe a lot of people have... have uh, strive for okay the day is coming closer F for me that's not the case and it's funny when I say the thing that I'm gonna keep traveling in uh, for 10-15 years I completely forget that in 10-15 years time I'm the normal retirement age no, right. <laughs> uh, and oh my god I never thought of that uh, yeah, or even changing years. I thought years. I keep this age that I have right, right. now. Right, can we all do that please? <laughs> <laughs> Getting up there but yeah, I think even if you have a very laborious job that you want to quit doing like physical work, the option to be able to do a passion project or something, or even for people like, let's say they want to learn how to podcast and they're 65 and they're retiring, like I think mm -hmm. that's really compelling as well to know that we still have things that we can learn. And I even think about um, I saw I love music and I want to learn how to DJ. I've always wanted to learn for my whole life and I only started doing it this year. And I saw an article that there's a woman in Japan who's like 90 years old or 88 years old. She rides her bike to the club and DJs a full set until mm -hmm. like four in the morning. And I'm like, wow, you know, if I don't get it done this year, then maybe even 20, 30 years from now, if I want to pick it up and be like mm. out DJing in a club somewhere, yeah. I can do that. It doesn't matter how old you are. Yeah. I just, just before coming here, I was listening to a radio program and they talk about, do you remember George Moroda? Um, no. A musician uh, from the 90s and 80s and he's 75 years old now and he's about to go on tour and he took up wow. DJing last year. <gasps> So oh my god that is so cool yeah, i so. need to google him yeah. that's inspiration for sure 
And so what are the types of things that you're uh, sharing with the world through your, your podcast? Um, talk a little bit about some of like the format of what you're, uh, how you're packaging this, how you are aiming to share visually and kind of sensory experiences mm. with your audience just through uh, recordings, like mm. sounds and, and your voice yeah. and interviews. You see, this, this microphone, I have it in my hand almost all the time. and uh, it, re it records stereo, so this is my, this is my thing. I, I use uh, this for, for everything. And uh, I record a lot uh, sound effects from the beach or from walking down the Puerto Galinas last night and, and from the cruise and wherever I am because sounds uh, can say so much. You get the feeling of what it's like in a place by hearing local languages and mm -hmm. maybe there's a mosque over here when I'm in Morocco that I'm editing yeah. right now. or. Uh, you, you you get a feeling okay this sounds different than what I'm 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 used to, and then I try to tell stories of what happens on my journey um, because the podcast is basically about what happens to me uh, as I travel to all these countries, so people can join me on the journey without leaving home. Meet Palebo, a digital nomad from Denmark on an epic journey around the world. My name is Pelle Bo, and I'm a long-time radio producer. In 2013, I started planning to become a digital nomad and a full-time traveler. Three years later, I had sold my house, my car and all my furniture. And in July 2016, I set out on a quest to visit every country in the world. And, uh, and then I speak to people I meet. Sometimes I, I do also do an interview series uh, where I interviewed you and, and many others from, from the ship, at, but nomads and, and travel bloggers that can inspire, but that's sort of a separate thing. Uh, but my normal um, podcast is about the journey and the country and the destination. So it can be an Uber driver, it can be someone I meet in a cafe, it can be a tour guide, it can be someone telling me when you go to this city you make sure that you speak to this person uh -huh. like when I was in in Boston I somebody from Denmark says oh my father used to have a girlfriend that wrote a book about a heist in the museum in Boston and she's got an interesting wow. story so it, it comes in very many different ways and all of a sudden I see myself sitting in her living room having her story so that's also <sighs> a, a part of what enriches me and my travel is that uh, that I, I do this podcast because it gives me an excuse right. to speak to some interesting people. Wow, that just gave me a flashback of just a month or so ago. I was in London and I was going to film with another a travel video blogger, videographer, and in the Uber on the way there, I was trying to figure out this gimbal and the Uber driver was like looking in the rear view mirror like what is that and I explained and it turned out that he was uh, working with content creators in LA and he wow. was flying from London to LA to like create music for these um, bloggers and all these cool people wow. and he gave me somebody's contact there and he's like you guys should talk and I think you can collaborate and it's just I don't know. It's uh, so many synchronicities when you travel and to think back at like the, the little things along the way that made that outcome possible is yeah. always so shocking to me. Like the fact that I saw this guy on Instagram and I reached out to him to interview him for my channel because I'm looking for cool people to talk to about mm -hmm. their experiences mm -hmm. to share with, with my audience. And then through that to meet an uber driver who yeah. has we have mutual friends in la it's just this, this is the way that the yeah. world is always surprising me yeah. and also um i get a lot of friend requests on, on facebook and also from people i don't really know and maybe a lot of people they just decline 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 but i i try to see okay who is this yeah. do we have mutual friends or what does he or she does and just before going to Albania, I got a request from a guy who works in the travel industry, that, and he stumbled on my name somewhere uh, when it comes to travel, and just without really thinking about it, sent me a friend request. 
And then I wrote back to him and said, hey, man, I'm coming to Tirana soon. Do um, you think we can go for a cup of coffee? And we ended up spending so much time together. And he's now a very close friend of mine, wow. just out of the blue, getting a, a face, uh, Facebook uh, friend request. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, you, you never know where it comes from. And uh, I try to keep an open mind and, um, and, and, of course, be aware because I was... Is he trying to scam me? You always yeah. have that thought, but uh, basically, I'm. I, I believe in the best in people. Well, you've definitely inspired me to start documenting even more, and whip my camera out or my iPhone. I might not have this cool recorder, but yeah, I, I mean, I'm just so inspired to to do more and create more and listening to the clips of your podcast from walking through markets or through the south and like Louisiana and all kinds mm. of things it's just a reminder that we're all just regular people but everybody still has like extraordinary stories to share and if we have the opportunity now with technology to be able to share and distribute the things that happen mm -hmm. that used to be so secret and limited mm -hmm. in our mm -hmm. travels, it's like, why wouldn't we? So yeah. that's um, it's like humbling opportunity to yeah. be able to do that. And I try to get more and more into podcasting as well, but it can be whatever medium uh, people like. If, if, yeah. if it's, it's video, it's video. If it's writing, it might be a blog or something else. Or if it's just talking, get hold of a, a small microphone and start recording stuff. Uh, and put it into a podcast. It's it's so easy. Great. And uh, on the cruise, I, I did a, a session, a workshop about that, how to start a podcast. And uh, I really try to inspire people to do it. Um, we got to have more podcasts out there. Yes, Even definitely. as if there weren't enough. I know. You put me on the spot, too. You're like, when is your podcast launching? And why don't you put this into a podcast? So, all right, I'll have to set a deadline for that. Yeah, because uh -huh. who, who wants to watch us? Right. Uh, <laughs> you know, people say, like, you really have a face for radio, or you really yeah, that, have a voice for this. That's what I've been told all the time. But it doesn't matter what you look like, guys. Like, Casey Neistat says that. that he oh. Everyone not, told him he was too ugly for video mm. and whatever, and he's, like, yeah, super yeah. successful. So I actually used to think that. I used to hate my voice. I used to think it was too squeaky and that I wasn't, like, skinny enough or whatever, pretty enough to be on video and on a travel show. And now, thankfully, I'm over that. But it doesn't matter. <laughs> Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Digital Nomad TV. It is so funny, when it comes to, uh, to voices, uh, one of the most admired voices when it comes to radio and podcasts is Ira Glass, who does uh, This American Life. And a lot of people try to emulate the way he speaks. Oh. And he's, he's got a funny way of speaking, huh. and he's not got the best voice. So I'm, I, I heard an interview with him recently where... Uh, he talked about this that so many people want to sound like him and it's so funny because his voice is not great yeah I think everyone should just sound like themselves yeah, exactly. basically yeah. and and find their own way like I could never copy your voice I could try but it would be weird <laughs> <laughs> try <laughs> okay thank you for watching <laughs> traveling with Kristen <laughs> well, do you have any uh, any last words of advice for people who are uh, at home and thinking about traveling? And then where can they listen to your travels? Well, my travels, it, it, as, as you said, it's it's called the Radio Vagabond. Oh, okay. And, uh, product placement. Product placement. <laughs> and uh, it's it's just looking for the Radio Vagabond in, in any podcast app or wherever you get the, your podcast. Make sure that you write the Radio Vagabond, radio. because otherwise you get the Danish one, and unless you're Danish, if you're Danish, leave out the the, but right. you know what I mean. Uh, you can also go to the radiovagabond.com. Super cool. Okay, and um, yeah, any words of advice for people who have wanted to travel but thought they were too old or it was too late or they didn't have enough money or something like that? I'm living proof that it's never too late. Never. Uh, and uh, and when it when it comes to money. It, well, live on the cheap. I, I live fairly cheap, and uh, I even do dorm rooms and private rooms and Airbnb and a lot of house sitting. So I try, to, I try, try not to spend a lot of money. I make less money than I did when I lived in Denmark, but I don't need uh, to, to make so much. So, so you just 
try it out and, and if it doesn't work because when I started traveling I thought how do I how do I know that I'm gonna like this but then if if I don't like it I can always just go back yeah exactly yeah. I say that all the time and go to Ikea and get some more <laughs> yeah collect experiences not stuff and and it's never too late to start even if you don't start the time's gonna pass anyway so who cares how long it takes just do it and thank you so much Pele oh, for coming so on much. sharing your story with everyone and we get to see you in in color and not just listen to your very amazing This is in color? <laughs> and we... <laughs> and thank you guys. Thank you for watching this episode of Digital Nomad TV, Badass Digital Nomads here on Traveling with Kristen. Um, what do you think of this journey? Um, would you start a new career or a new life traveling at 50, 60, 75 years old? Let us know in the comments. And like this video, give it a thumbs up, share it subscribe, with your friends. Subscribe, subscribe. Subscribe for more videos, travel vlogs, and interviews from all around the world as I take you behind the scenes in the digital nomad lifestyle. So long for now from Brazil. Bye. Bye. Now can I eat this pineapple? Is that, I, mean, I, wanted, I wanted it to look tropical and I didn't want to eat it. Mm.